So this is our groundwater model that does a great job showing both how groundwater can move um, underground and how it connects to our surface water. So to orient everyone here, here we have a lake. We have several pumping wells drilled into the groundwater. These are very similar to the wells that feed our schools and many of our homes across Rhode Island. About 25% of people get their drinking water from groundwater wells. Um, we also over here have some injection wells. Those might be uh, used for fracking other industrial uses, which can have an impact on groundwater. And we also have some observation wells. Observation wells are used by scientists or engineers to monitor the depth and perhaps the quality of the groundwater they're using. Uh, today though, we're mostly gonna focus on our pumping wells. Um, and wells get water out of what we call aquifers. The word aquifer just means an, <clears throat> an area underground that holds groundwater. Here we have a shallow well that is drilled into an unconfined aquifer. Unconfined means it is open to the surface. Um, and it looks very similar to what we have here in Rhode Island's um, sand and gravel aquifers. So they are pretty much water held in wet sand and wet gravel. Um, some of our more shallow wells pump water out of this kind of aquifer. We also have in Rhode Island um, deeper aquifers that are cracks in the bedrock that water can move through. So our deeper wells come from those types of aquifers. Here on our model, you can see a couple of things that are less common in Rhode Island, but are relatively common nationally. We have a confining layer of rock. So that's a layer of rock that is mostly impermeable to water, mostly will not allow water to seep through. And below it, we have some water stored in what we call an artesian aquifer. Now, an artesian aquifer is water that is below a confining layer of rock, um, which can protect it from any pollution sources, but also puts it under a little bit of pressure. So artesian wells, wells drilled into um, an artesian aquifer, are often considered to be very clean because they have less risk of exposure to pollution from the surface. However, if they do somehow become contaminated, you can see right there, there's a little bit of sand and gravel moving into this artesian aquifer. It can become very hard to clean that up or it can become very hard to find another place to safely drill a well. Um, you can also see on this model that our groundwater and our surface water are connected and they rest the top of the groundwater and the top of the surface water at about the same level. So I'm gonna use this marker to draw a line across. We can draw a line across here and here that shows the top of the water and we call that the water table. That's where the, the top line of the groundwater rests at any given time. Water can move between the groundwater and surface water. It can move very slowly, um, but that means that any pollution source that impacts this lake is also gonna provide a risk to the groundwater next to it and vice versa. Um, now, when we pump water out of the groundwater using a well, we are gonna be pulling it away from other places. What I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm going to put a tiny bit of food coloring into this observation well next to the, near the pumping wells. Give it a second to work its way down. And I'm putting that there so we can trace where water is going to go from this area. Now I'm going to start pumping this well right here. And I want you all to watch the food coloring. The water is pumping out into the container.
and you can see that the food coloring I put in to trace where the water is moving is being pulled towards the well that we're pumping. So I am changing the direction that that groundwater might be flowing and pulling water towards it. You can also notice, if you zoom in on the lake, that the water level of the lake has gone down. When we pump water out of the ground, we are pulling it, in many cases, depending on the geology of the area, we're pulling it away from surface water, water bodies. So in what this means for us in this area is that if we put in a new housing development next to an area with a lot of ground fed vernal pools in the springtime, we had to put in wells for those homes, those vernal pools might go away. The level of nearby water bodies or streams might also go down. This is just one example of the competing uses of water. Now, release the pressure there for a second. If we were to drill a deeper well or pump out of a deeper well, sometimes that can actually pull water away from more shallow wells. This is an issue that they've run into a lot in California, which produces most of the United States vegetables, most of the world's almonds, as well as a lot of meat, which requires a lot of pasture land or hay land to feed. Um, when they've had droughts in recent years, they've had to drill deeper and deeper wells that has in some cases drawn the water level down so low that um, shallower wells at people's homes in the area are no longer providing sufficient water to keep them safe. That's another example of the competing uses of water. Um, and agri agriculture is a large water use and it's one that um, can pull water away from other important sources. But there are a lot of great technologies that farmers um, and producers are using to help tackle that problem.